good evening and welcome to the August 26th, 2024 meeting, the Menlo Park Planning Commission. I am Chair Jennifer Schindler, and I thank you for being here this evening, either virtually or here at Mel Haven Community Center. For those attending virtually, there is a globe icon on your screen that will allow you to listen to tonight's meeting in Spanish. I will now begin our call to order. After I have read the call to order, the call to order will also be read in Spanish. Established by state law, our city's planning commission is composed of seven volunteer residents of Menlo Park, appointed to four-year terms by the city council. Our planning commission is not a policy setting body, that's the city council. We are a policy implementing body. We review development proposals for compliance with the city's general plan and zoning ordinances, which can both be found on the city's website. The Commission also reviews city-initiated land use planning projects, such as general plan updates and zoning ordinance amendments. The Commission reviews development proposals requiring the use permit, architectural control, a variance, minor subdivision, as well as the environmental reviews associated with those projects. When applicable, Planning Commission reviews below market rate or BMR housing agreements associated with these applications. The Commission is the final decision making body for these applications unless appealed to the City Council. The Commission also serves as the recommending body to the City Council for major subdivisions, rezoning, conditional development permits, zoning ordinance amendments, general plan amendments, and environmental reviews associated with those projects. If applicable, planning commission reviews and makes recommendations on BMR agreements and associated with these projects. We work closely with the staff in our city's planning division which is responsible for implementation of our general plan, zoning ordinances, and related policies. We encourage your active participation, whether you are an applicant or an interested member of the public, and there will be an opportunity to speak publicly for each specific agenda item, as well as for general public comment. This evening, I am particularly grateful to the city staff and the staff at the community center for making it possible to have tonight's meeting here it was amazing recently going many, many, many things. Good. Perfect. All right. Um, we have already been able to do the call to order in Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, and so with that completed, I will move on to the next section of our agenda, the roll call. Commissioner Doe. Here. Commissioner Herrick. Here. Commissioner Sillen? Here. Commissioner Silverstein? Here. Okay. I'm here. Forgot to share. Um, Vice Chair Eric and Commissioner Luruzzi are absent this evening. Um, we do have five commissioners here in the room, which is a quorum. Um, so with that, we'll move on to the next section of our agenda, which is reports and announcements. Mr. Smith, uh, are there any reports or announcements from staff this evening? Good evening, Chair Chandler and of course the Planning Commission. Um, we're excited to be hosting the first Planning Commission meeting at the Valley Community Campus, and we appreciate uh, everybody being patient with us as we adjust to the new technology and setup. Um, I do have just a uh, quick announcement for tomorrow's city council meeting on August 27th. Um, there will be three items that may be of interest to the commission. So the first would be a study session on affordable housing development on the city-owned downtown parking lots. That is program with each 4G of housing element. We'll be looking at um, Looking at the prioritization of those laws and the potential designation process, we have council feedback on that. Another item will be an appeal of the planning commission decision on 1399 Willow Road. And then the third item of interest would be um, an update to the 2030 Climate Action Plan for an implementation scope work 
the period from 2025 to 2030. That is all I have for you for announcements. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, I have a quick clarifying question on the little room. Was that an appeal or a call up? It was a call up by the city council member. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, do commissioners have any other commissioners have uh, questions about the updates and announcements? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, since we have no questions, we will move on to the public comment um, portion of our agenda. Uh, this is an D, the general public comment component. And so for instructions on how to participate and to begin our public comment period, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Kruger, who is serving as our clerk of this evening. Mr. Kruger, could you please um, give those attending in person and virtually uh, instructions? Thank you very much, evening, Chair. My apologies. Good evening, Chair Schindler, <clears throat> County Commissioners, and members of the public. I'm now Peter Associate Planner, the GC Clerk for tonight. I would like to advise anyone interested in providing public comment on this item to please provide a comment card and walk up to the table here. We have comment cards available in the back of the building, closer to the parking lot. And um, we at the moment have one comment card in person. Uh, my apologies, it's for the item in question. This is for the general public comment for items not on tonight's agenda. Um, and at the moment, in looking at Zoom, I do not see any hands raised. We do have one item that just came in for public comment here. We can have the person come up if you'd like at this time. Um, we actually just pause technically to be sure that everyone is able to, to hear. I'm, I'm getting a little bit of an echo, and I see that there may be some audio challenges going on. So I don't know if we potentially need to repeat any of the instructions um, to the community. I apologize for that. We, we shall work on that at this time, and we'll see if we can make the audio more um, audible for everyone, something that's a little bit louder for everyone in the building. <clears throat> okay, in light of that, I can speak louder. Maybe everyone can hear better with the audio a little more loudly. Okay, um, so I guess with everyone using the microphones this evening, including myself, uh, please speak louder and more clearly into the microphone uh, for the members of the public and commissioners and staff who are in uh, the building this evening. Uh, as I had stated uh, earlier, I apologize for the audio uh, issues, but uh, we can have uh, our one non-agendized, non-agenda public commenter come up at this time if you'd like, uh, if, if that's okay with the audio now. Yes, thank you. And I'll introduce you, sorry. Uh, um, Arina Lal, is that right? Arina, yes, uh, you may speak. Um, we're gonna set up a timer, if you just give me one moment for three minutes, and then you'll be able, you'll be able to speak at that time. Arina Lal. Thank you for being the first person willing to ask that. It's really my Mr. Kruger, will you just give us a thumbs up when you're ready? Thank you. Hi, my name is Marina Ball, and I've been a resident of South Haven for 30 years. And recently, in the last three years, my husband and I had the opportunity to convert to our own home. And every day I look out the window, and there's a bus stop right across the street, and I see people waiting in the sun with no room. 
There is no cleaning up this bus stop. There is no shade, nowhere to find a spot to find some shade. And on hot summer days, I often see the same set of dunes taking the blood from the corner of New Bridge and Brooklyn. And especially during our hot summer, it's really hard for people uh, to stand out there in the sun. One day recently, I had two young teenage girls knock on my door, asking for water. Because the bus was late. There was no shame. Your mission state that you want to provide um, those in underserved communities uh, environmental justice. And that means that everyone should have equal protection and advantages when it comes to the environment. We need, we need people. Like you in your position of power to bring the shade, to bring the seeds, and then maybe people get to work. That's really all I have to say. Thank you for your time. Mr. Kruger, do we have any other comment cards or hands raised at this time for our general public comments? I see no additional hands raised. Um, we could go ahead and close public comment if you'd like at this time. We'll wait a little longer. Thank you. Let's just give it one more moment, just given that we're all in the new technical environment here. Are there any other hands raised at this time, Mr. Breyer? I can confirm. I still see no other hands raised. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, I will go ahead and close the public comment portion of our agenda. Um, there are, and move on to the next section. Um, there are no items in our consent calendar, which would have been section E. So we will move on to section F, public hearing. Um, we have one item in our public hearing section of the meeting this evening. Um, I will now read the description of this agenda item at one. The Planning Commission is considering resolutions to recommend that City Council amend the general plan by adding an environmental justice element, updating the safety element, and determining the actions are addressed in previously certified subsequent environmental impact report under the California Environmental Quality Act, or C. The environmental justice element is a state mandated element for cities with disadvantaged and or underserved communities. The element addresses public health risks and environmental justice concerns and focuses on Bell Haven and Bayfront neighborhoods as cities with disadvantaged underserved communities. The environmental justice element includes seven goals that focus on one, Addressing health risks. Two, reducing pollution exposure and improving air quality. Three, equitably providing public facilities. Four, promoting high quality affordable food access. Five, ensuring safe, sanitary, and stable homes. Six, encouraging physical activity and active transportation. And seven, creating equitable civic engagement. The safety element is also a state mandated element of the general plan, originally adopted in 2013. Since then, state law requires safety elements to address climate change adaptation and resiliency and give increased attention to wildfire and evacuation routes. The safety element update focuses on these topics. The amendments are covered by a previously certified environmental impact report under CEPA adopted as part of the housing development update in January 2020. Mr. Chen, um, I believe you are going to be our leader of the presentation this evening. Um, and to get us started with the presentation, I think it was a number of different speakers this evening. 
Thank you, church member, members of the commission, and members of the Middle Park community. It's so great to be here with you all this evening. This is the familiar faces from our past community. And so thank you so much for joining us today. All right, Mr. Ken, I think we're going to need to um, up increase the volume at four and or potentially coming into the microphones from this half. Okay. Let's, let's try that and see if it works. Okay, you see me a uh, thumbs to the side if I need to speak a little bit louder. Just a little bit, okay. Is this some crunching? Good volume. <laughs> Good volume. Uh -huh. Good. Yeah, be good. Okay. Good evening. Thank you again, everyone, for bearing with us as we work through these technical difficulties. We're very excited to be here with you all this evening in this new space. My name is Calvin Chan. I'm a senior planner with the Community Development Department. I'm joined with other members of our Housing Element Update Project team that I'll introduce right now. We have Principal Planner and Planning Commission Liaison Tom Smith to my left. We also have Associate Planner Matt Pruder to my right. Sitting alongside us uh, is Community Devel Development Director Deanna Chow, as well as our Assistant City Attorney Mary Wagner. We have uh, President of M Group Jeff Bradley here in the audience with us. We also have Director of Programs uh, Kate Kennedy with Climate Resilient Communities. And virtually joining us this evening, we also have Assistant City Attorney S. Schaefer, Managing Director of Change Lab Solutions, Eric Calloway, as well as Principal Planner, Asher Cohen with M Group. So thank you for letting us introduce members of our project team. This evening, we'll be giving an overview of different project milestones, as well as a community outreach. We'll be reviewing highlighted refinements to the Environmental Justice, or EJ, safety elements since the April 2024 drafts and the June 2024 study sessions with the Commission and City Council. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission this evening adopt resolutions recommending that the City and Council amend the general plan to include Menlo Park's first environmental justice element and to also update the safety element. Alongside that, um, the Planning Commission is recommended to uh, determine that these actions are addressed in the previously certified subsequent environmental impact report under the California Environmental Quality Act. In our first section of the presentation, we'll be talking about different project milestones as well as community outreach. Beginning in 2021, the development of the 2023 to 2031 housing element, the preparation of the EJ element, as well as the update of the safety element, collectively called the Housing Element Update Project, has been a multi-year effort that has been led by city staff as well as a team of consultants managed by the M Group. The City Council adopted the Housing Element Update in January 2023 and amended it in January 2024. The State Housing and Community Development Department, or HDD, certified the city's housing element earlier this year. The adoption of the city's first the environmental justice element, the update to the safety element, are the remaining two components of our overall housing element update project. These two elements, along with the land use, circulation, housing, open space and conservation, and noise elements, make up the city's general plan, which helps guide plan planning decisions across our entire Menlo Park community. We'll take a moment to uh, recap our road to adoption with some document milestones. In April of 2022, the city released the Neighborhood Profiles of Environmental Justice Considerations Report. This was a report that helped provide a summary analysis on various mental park neighborhood social, economic, as well as environmental conditions. This analysis was the first step to help us identify uh, both disadvantaged communities as defined by state uh, regulations. And in Menlo Park, we use that preferred term of uh, underserved communities. The neighborhood profiles was uh, very influential and helpful for informing a very extensive as well as a thorough community outreach and engagement effort to help determine priorities and plans for improvement. A little bit later that same year, in December of 2022, we released the initial draft and the environmental justice element as well as the safety element update. 
Earlier this year in April, we released a revised draft of the EJ element as well as the safety element update following various meetings with the community, planning commission, and city council. This summer, oops, summer, we had the opportunity to conduct additional meetings with the community. It's great to see a lot of familiar faces here this evening, as well as with the planning commission and city council. And following that, the project team revised drafts of both the elements, and we are presenting them now this evening for adoption. For the next couple of slides, I'll hand the presentation over to Kate Kennedy, Director of Programs with Climate Resilient Communities, or CRC, to discuss how the, CR how the city as well as CRC work together to engage the community in different uh, robust conversations, to really learn about different methods um, to advance environmental justice and safety throughout the park. Let's just do a quick volume check. Volume check on me. Nice. I don't usually have a problem with volume. Thank you. I think um, we're okay for Mr. Kennedy to continue. Just one second. I'm perfect. I'm not sure if um, that might need to be shared again. In case there's anyone just joining us, uh, we're waiting for the visual presentation, the slides to, to come back onto the screen. Thank you for your patience.
All right, thank you for hanging with us. So I'd just like to start by kind of recapping the community outreach process that we've gone up to to this point. Um, so the this process began in earnest in the summer of 2021 with some pop-up meetings and the first kind of community kickoff discussion. It continued then to some more general community meetings, three focus groups. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Mr. Kennedy. I think we are having some, are we corrected? Okay, thank you. I, I think we've got the, the translation, apologies. Thanks, proceed. All right, that was a thumbs up, thank awesome. you. All right, now we're ready. So throughout this, you know, this has been more than a three year long process to, to get to this point. Um, along the way, we've had a lot of really excellent community engagement. Starting in spring of 2022, we held a kickoff community meeting at the city council chambers, as well as three focus groups one that was for families and hosted by the Bellhaven Community Development Fund, one that was for Spanish-speaking residents, and that was held by CRC and El Comite. And then we had a third focus group that was like led and attended by um, a lot of community leaders. Um, it was really a, a grassroots community-led focus group towards the end. We also conducted a survey of more than 300 Bellhaven households. And then that all of that work informed the initial draft of the environmental justice element. Following that draft, we had more community meetings. We took that draft document back to the community and had conversations in both English and Spanish about what was in that document. In June, we presented that document here to the Planning Commission and the City Council. That resulted in revisions to the document and then another series of community meetings. Throughout this entire process, uh, starting in March of 2022, um, CRC helped organize the, the Bellhaven Climate Change Community Team and that team has been meeting monthly ever since. So about 26, 27 consecutive months now um, to discuss community priorities around environmental justice and uh, any, any issue that's affecting the community. I, oh, sorry, you can go back for a second still. So during that that process, that more than two that more than two year process, almost three year process, we went through a lot of different things. There was COVID, of course. Uh, we had a four day power outage in the community, and about it's what seems like more atmospheric rivers than I could count on one hand. And these conversations, again, with more than 1,800 Bellhaven residents, were extremely revealing about the need and the urgency of this work, and also about a lack of trust in government to see these dreams of the community actually come to fruition. There is extreme climate vulnerability here in the Bellhaven neighborhood. There is uh, the impending threat of sea level rise and groundwater rise. There is extreme heat, which we know and have seen more and more each summer. There's a lack of tree canopy and air pollution. 
And here in this neighborhood specifically, we're contending with the consequences of redlining, of racialized zoning practices, of segregation. And the consequences of those policies have compounded over the decades. It's a debt that has been collecting interest for 60, 70, 80 years. And this environmental justice element is a repayment plan and one that will improve the lives of all Menlo Park residents. It's a roadmap to address the climate hazards that are affecting the Bellhaven neighborhood, including air pollution, transit, traffic, and the threat of displacement from the community. And while these issues will affect Bellhaven residents first and worst, by addressing them comprehensively, we will create a better Menlo Park for all of us because displacement is something that affects families and neighbors and friends. There are people on both sides of the 101 that love one another and value the community that we have. And these policies offer us an opportunity to address these issues holistically and from a, pros a, a, pros a process that has been grounded by and led by the community from its very inception. So in those conversations, there were three clear priorities that emerged. And this doesn't mean that the other things are, you know, optional, but that these are the issues that residents found most pressing. And they're often related directly to really fundamental basic needs. So the top priority that emerged among conversations with all of our residents, eight, over 1,800 folks that were represented in this process, the top priority was providing safe, sanitary, and stable homes, which means preventing displacement from the community and addressing home safety issues. The second top priority was promoting access to high quality and affordable food. The third priority was about or the third most pressing issue residents identified was reducing pollution exposure and improving air quality in the neighborhood. So your home, access to food, and a healthy environment to live in were the foundational basic needs that residents offered as a clear priority to, to address here in the neighborhood. I think, oh, sorry, one, one, one second on that point, and then I'll turn it back. So I think we, we already heard from one commenter today, um, Arena, about folks who are, you know, waiting for the bus without shade, without seats. And that's something, again and again, that we heard brought up throughout this process. Um, there were also a lot of stories about people who were tenants and worried about asking about you know repairs to their home they they felt that they couldn't ask a landlord about making those repairs that were affecting their safety but they were worried that they would have to move out if those concerns were addressed one member of the climate change community team was even diagnosed with asthma during this process um and Again, struggles with asthma was something that we heard come up over and over again in conversations with residents. And if you look at the survey data that we collected, um, the incidence of asthma in the Bellhaven neighborhood was more than twice as high as that in the rest of Midland Park. So this process has surfaced very clear priorities. And I think that it's remarkable to see that action is already being taken in some respects to address those priorities. Um, for example, meeting in the Bellhaven neighborhood, having the city council and the planning commission meet here instead of on the other side of the 101 
was one of the priorities that residents suggested in these conversations. And, you know, even if it's been a little bit halty today, I think the fact that there, there's 30 people here for this conversation is already a testament to that being something that's going to create a more just and, and equitable Menlo Park. Um, we're also already seeing action around affordable housing and the anti-displacement strategy. So I think it's remarkable to see that the voices of residents through this process are already being heard. And I think it's important that we take that the rest of the way and across the line here for adoption. So thank you all for, for listening and thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy, for that summary. And uh, to our interpreters, we'll be beginning again on slide nine. Next slide. So following our two community meetings in Bellhaven in the May timeframe, as well as two study sessions with the Planning Commission and City Council in June, the project team had the opportunity to revise the EJ element and safety element in response to community input, as well as the commissions and council feedback. The next few slides that we'll show uh, will highlight different revisions for both elements, as well as the EJ element action guide, which are both included in your staff report this evening. We will also highlight some refined or added EJ programs. For each element, a revisions and feedback log is provided to record feedback from the study sessions, as well as identify how the comments were addressed in the revised elements. For the safety element, some of the revisions highlighted include the identification of Senate Bill 272, which is a requirement um, for efforts to collaboratively develop a regional shoreline adaptation plan. Clarification that Menlo Park's local hazard mitigation plan is part of the countywide multi-jurisdictional local hazard mitigation plan, as well as revisions to include more information on a variety of topics, including soft story buildings, sea level rise and climate change, cooling centers and storm related issues, as well as emergency preparedness. A significant highlight for the EJ element is the presentation of a streamlined, reformatted and redesigned adoption draft version of the element, which is included as attachment A, exhibit A. This would be the clean copy version of the EJ element a track changes version is also provided as attachment J. The EJ element revisions and feedback generally focus on clarifying presentation of information as well as actions and accountability following adoption. It also emphasizes pollution reduction and air quality improvements as well as enhancing community outreach and collaboration with stakeholders, as well as strengthening support for housing. As introduced in some prior meetings, the EJ element is accompanied by an action guide, which is provided as staff report attachment M. The action guide is a separate but complementary document that lies outside of the general plan itself. The action guide is a tool to be used to manage and coordinate different city efforts to accomplish the goals, policies, and programs outlined in the EJ element. This dual document approach allows for more frequent updating of the action guide in response to changing community needs, funding opportunities, as well as ongoing community outreach, particularly from Menlo Park's underserved communities, all while not requiring a general plan amendment. The action guide has been streamlined for ease of use, as well as reformatted to highlight the different um, community identified priorities, as well as to minimize the additional detail formally shown in an expanded matrix form. 
from the top three community identified priorities, programs and action items that are noted with a short term initiation time frame, meaning zero to three years following EJ element adoption, will be prioritized for sooner action and are already underway. City staff, community partners, outside agencies, or a combination of all these groups can help implement these actions and programs. The action, the action guide will be maintained on the city's website and is intended to improve accountability by being more adaptable as well as responsive to different community needs and opportunities. Following the June 2024 study sessions, three EJ element programs related to the action guide were either refined or added. Program EJ7J was refined to clarify that the action guide has annual reporting, including provision to the city council, as well as making sure it's available for everyone to see on the city's website. Program 7K is a new program which helps clarify the action guide progress updates as well as a process for revision with ongoing outreach. Program 7L uh, includes city council consideration of our community identified EJ priorities uh, during upcoming annual priority and goal setting workshops. In closing, through this presentation, We've had the opportunity to overview project milestones as well as community outreach, as well as highlighting different refinements to the environmental justice and safety elements since the April 2024 drafts and June 2024 study session. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission adopt resolutions recommending the City Council amend the general plan to include Menlo Park's first environmental justice element and to also update the safety element. Concurrently, to determine the actions are addressed in a previously certified subsequent environmental impact report under the California Environmental Quality Act. Within the staff report, there are two attachments. Attachment A is the draft commission resolution recommending environmental justice element adoption and attachment B is the same commission's rec uh, resolution recommending safety element update adoption. Looking ahead, the planning commission feedback from this evening, as well as any recommendations, will be forwarded to the city council. And tentatively, on September 24th, the city council will conduct a public meeting to consider the planning commission's recommendations and to consider adoption. We invite all members to, of the public to visit our project website at menlopark.gov slash housing element, where we'll provide the latest updates as well as there's an opportunity to sign up for the email list. Please do sign up for the email list so that we can keep um, all those interested informed of any upcoming meetings as well as progress to advance environmental justice and safety. So with that, we'll close staff's presentation and we are available for any questions from the commission. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chan uh, and Mr. Kennedy. I uh, appreciate the presentation. Uh, in just a moment, we are going to open it up to public comment on this agenda item regarding environmental justice element and a safety element. But before we move to public comment, um, I will ask if there are commissioners who have clarifying questions uh, at this moment about the presentation or clarifying questions from the staff report. Commissioner Sillen, a clarifying question. Thank you. Um, yeah, question for staff. Between today and the potential meeting with council a month from now, is staff expecting to make any further changes based on commission feedback today? Or are we simply kind of ex expecting to vote yes or no on the document as is? Thank you for the question, Commissioner Sillen. We definitely welcome your feedback and we'll do our best to incorporate uh, any feedback 
we will also be taking your feedback and uh, forwarding it to the planning committee or to the city council for consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sillen. Do other commissioners have any clarifying questions at this time? Okay. Uh, seeing none, Mr. Pruder, could you please provide instructions and begin public comment period for this agenda item? Thank you, Chair Schindler. At this time, we will be having public comment for this item. Any member of the public is welcome to uh, use, uh, go to the back table and provide a comment card. If you'd like to provide public comment, you may uh, give it to me. Alternatively, if you are on Zoom, you can press the hand icon and we will be notified of your uh, desire to speak on this item. In addition, if any members of the public are calling by phone, you can press star nine on your keypad and that will also notify us that you would like to speak publicly on this item. At this time, I have one public commenter who has provided a card and on Zoom, we have no hands raised. So we can begin the public comment process if you'd like with the member of the public who is in person and we can see if others would like to join. Thank you. Yes, please. Thank you, Mr. Pruder. So my first uh, comment card is Pam Jones. You may now begin speaking and you will have three minutes um, to speak. Thank you. Um, good evening, commissioners, staff, and consultants. Uh, my name is Pamela Jones. I'm a longtime resident. Even closer. How about that? Thank you. Okay. So good evening again, um, and thank you for being here. Is that good? All right. Sorry, we'll just start over on the time. Sorry about that. Just one moment. No problem. Please begin. All right. Good evening, commissioners, staff, and consultants. Welcome to the Bellhaven Neighborhood Community Campus. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Pamela Jones. I'm a longtime resident of the Menlo Park, Bellhaven Neighborhood. And I am a member of a number of organizations, but I'm here representing and speaking only for myself. I want to, first of all, commend the staff for the incredible work that they've done in looking at the timeline and the number of revisions and revisions and revisions. Um, it's really remarkable from where we began and where we are now with this document. I also want to thank CRC staff because one of the things that they did is they kept us moving along. They always showed us the progress so that we didn't get bogged down and oh no, are they gonna listen to us? Um, I do know that overall, that this was a very heavy lift and I focused mainly on goal uh, EJ7 and that is the, the most challenging point is to get the information out to all of the community of there's a, a meeting, uh, any information that's really pertinent to uh, the community. And knowing that our community, does, well, no community, all uses the web. I mean, that there's a lot people do that are online. There's a lot that are not. So we need to have multiple methods of contacting residents to make sure they have the options. They may not show up, but at least they know about it. Um, a reminder is that in 20, um, 2012, 2013, when the Bill Haven visioning was done, there was, um, they came up with a fairly successful way of doing outreach. It included having a person that lived in the community do the outreach in the community. And they were also, of course, bilingual. Uh, so that's, look back over uh, what they did years ago and see that uh, maybe there's something in there we can use today. They also did a newsletter. It was a follow-up on what we had talked about um, in the past with progress the city was doing and announcements, and it was only quarterly. So that too, I imagine, was, was uh, manageable. Yes, we have all this information online, but again, a lot of people don't go online in order to 
get the information. Um, and they may not even use a cell phone. Okay, I'm just learning how to use it. And I still get information from my grandchildren on, you know, to try this, that, and the other. Um, I'd also like to say that um, it would have been helpful to have the document a little sooner. I think they got it to us as soon as they could, but it would have been nice to have the information sooner so that we could uh, really do a comparison of the information. So again, thank you. And most of all, I want to thank the staff. Thank you for your comment. Thank you very much. At this time, we have one additional public commenter who would like to speak in person right now, uh, named Marlene. Um, you will have three minutes when you're ready uh, at this time. Thank you. Hi, commissioners, um, staff, and members of the community. Um, my name is Marlene Sindoyo. I am a recent Belhaven resident, um, and I also have helped organize in the community for the last three years, um, specifically on the EJ element, but also just getting their participation in the city uh, processes, the housing element, and um, trying to get their voice out. Um, I really appreciate the extensive outreach that has been done in the community. Um, and I'd like to go over a few programs that I think may need a little bit more revision or in ways that I've like heard uh, community members talk about things and trying to make sure that they're also in the action in the programs of this document. Um, one of them is um, action item 67 um, to facilitate a physical activity. Um, it refers to lighting, like uh, putting more lighting in areas that are essential and making sure that community members are part of that process, but also that there is um, regular maintenance of this lighting because I know that I, there's residents that actually go up, go walking around the neighborhood to make sure that uh, the lightings are working, and if not, they actually call public works themselves to get that sorted out. Um, and I've heard a few times that the lighting here at Kelly Park isn't working, and so then, you know, members don't feel safe coming. Uh, so regular maintenance of that would be great. Also, um, we, we had a comment today about um, having shade for um, like public transportation, so for bus stops. Um, and I think that's something that is not included. Like it's not an action item in the documents. So I think that would be really great to add. Um, and I think as Pam said, like a little bit more time for the community members to actually take a deep dive into this document. I understand it's very long and we tried our best to get community feedback, but I think that if we can um, have it presented in the way that the community can actually look at it and give feedback directly to the document, that would be great. Um, and I know that uh, staff has gotten lots of um, feedback and um, comments, so just kind of taking a look over that to make sure that everything as much as we can can be included in the document. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you very much. At this time, I see no hands raised. I've received no additional comment cards. We can wait a little longer if you'd like to ensure all comments have been provided. Thank you. Let's just give it another few moments, give folks an opportunity. Mr. Pruder, do we have any other hands raised online or comment cards received here this evening? I see no additional hands raised online, and I see no additional interested commenters in person. If you'd like, you may close public comment at this time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, seeing no other requests for public comment, we will close that part of the agenda. We'll close public comment and move into discussion by the Planning Commission and ultimately two motions. Um, the first motion will address recommending that the City Council amend the general plan to include an environmental justice element and a second motion that will address recommending the City Council update the safety element. Um, so at this time I will open it up for Planning Commissioners for questions um, or commentary.
Commissioner Doe. Thank you, Chair Schindler. Um, it's so exciting to be in this space and to see how many more people were hopefully made it easier for Bellhaven residents to come here tonight. I'm sure after a day of work and kids, just having something in your community makes it that much easier to attend. Um, at our previous June 3rd meeting, um, a public comment from Ms. Jones, um, uh, Ms. Jones said, we cannot undo the harm that's been done for 70 years. We're going to do the best that we can with it and we have the obligation to do it. And I just hope that um, it doesn't take 70 years to see progress on this so that people can see it within um, their lifetimes, within their childhood. Um, so I just wanted to express appreciation to staff, the action guide, which is cleaner and more legible. I appreciated that um, contrary to a previous draft, the goals are organized with the um, policies, programs, and actions. See how the things at the bottom support the things above it. Um, and it's really a compliment to CRC really drawing out the themes important to the community and, and staff hearing that and organizing in a way that reflects that. Um, and, just, and just to bounce to the safety element, I um, whether it's for this round or for a subsequent update, I, I believe the safety element could benefit from how the environmental justice element is organized. Currently, the safety element has goals and policies all listed and then program separately. So you have to kind of jump around to see how the programs implement those policies. Um, so hopefully that's an easy enough just, um, formatting the information so that people can actually ascertain do these programs uh, make sense with the related policies. Um, and I appreciate the action guide is intended to be more flexible and to live outside of the state requirements to update elements every eight years. Just living here in the past six years, we had crazy orange sky and wildfire in 2020 to atmospheric rivers and loss of power for three to four days in early 2023 and early 2024. So in less than eight years, we have seen just how extreme weather can be. And the scary thing about the effects of climate change is its unpredictability and scale and frequency and continue to impact a community already hard hit by man-made and natural events. Um, so I appreciate the, the flexibility, the dynamic nature of the um, action, action guide. Um, I had another um, comment too on the biosafety levels um, it, relating to the safety element. Um, I wanted to acknowledge that I believe it's not been incorporated into the safety element, but city council had a made it very clear that there it will come back as a study session. Um, so I just wanted to express appreciation for that decision and direction by the city council um, and to acknowledge that it's a very urgent topic given that we already have neighbors living adjacent to um, biosafety um, labs and thanks to the community members who have elevated that topic repeatedly. And I believe that's all I have for the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Doe. Commissioner Farrick. Thank you. Um, and thank you for this presentation and uh, again for the really great outreach over the last several years. My question is really probably best for Community Development Director Chow or potentially Mr. Smith. And it's really around, you know, how these incredible goals and priorities that have now been established or are in the process of being established, how they come to life. And can you just talk about how a city funds them or how they become reality or, and you know, and kind of just to kind of set context there? Thank you. Good, good evening, Commissioner Barrick and members of the Planning Commission. I'm Deanna Chow, the Community Development Director. So that's a question. And I think that's what this is all about is how do we use policies, programs, goals into action. 
And so um, I think one of the big first steps is, is funding um, as part of our upcoming or current budget, the fiscal year 24, 25, the city council did set aside $1 million to um, help see the, the funding of, of the implementation of our programs. The action guide does identify according to the top three uh, goals and the priorities that were identified in the presentation. Um, those are sort of at the top of the action guide. And then in that, you'll see things that are short term, medium term, and, and long term. Um, I'm pleased to say many of those things are things that are currently underway, things that might be funded by other funding sources if they're part of the capital improvement program. And then again, this additional set aside that was um, from the, the Bayfront Mitigation Fund. So um, the programs itself, we established a few that is part of our goal setting session. They'd be um, communicated through the city council that happens yearly, usually at the beginning of the year. And then that helps set uh, department work plans, the city council priorities, and then that feeds into the budget cycle. So that is sort of the routine that you'll that we hope to implement. We did incorporate another program that identifies um, a yearly reporting system. So that is to help the community stay informed about where we are in the progress of these items. We'll make that uh, more visible on our webpage. We're working through what that is going to look like, um, but that is the goal of the, the action item. So to make it more digestible, there's a lot of policy conversation uh, in the in the document, but it's the action guides that came out of the the really good uh, feedback that we received during our engagement process that will um, be used to to do our, our our programming and to maintain the flexibility to those potentially around as potential um, needs of the community change. All set? Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Farrick. Thank you, Ms. Chow. Other commissioner questions or comments? Commissioner Sillen. Thank you. Um, yeah, I want to start by thanking staff for um, listening to the community and the commission regarding uh, further modifications from the study session. So I really appreciated having the um, changes tracked at the top of each document and especially knowing what was changed and based on feedback from where, like it said, you know, feedback from the commission or council or staff. So that was really helpful. And the red line versions were also very helpful. So just want to thank staff for working on all that and providing that in a relatively short time frame. Um, I want to uh, second what Commissioner Doe said about the action plan. It's uh, the new format I really like as well. It's ordered by, you know, community priorities come first and um, it's cleaner and easier to follow. A uh, couple of just little sort of administrative requests from me would be in the staff report, there were a lot of attachments and it was hard to find each of the attachments further down in the document. So it'd be nice if page numbers were provided or hyperlinks for each attachment if it's in the staff report. And it would be great to have an Excel version of any major tables such as the action plan uh, for myself personally. And I know at least one other planning commissioner would appreciate having it in that format to make it easy, just kind of sort it, filter it, digest it. And perhaps there are community members that would appreciate that as well. Um, regarding the, what, what we're talking about today, um, I appreciate what Mr. Kennedy said about the fact that this process is largely, or could be thought of as a, repayment on previous wrongs. Um, and so it must be taken very seriously. You know, we've had, like Mr. Kenny outlined, a lot of community meetings and focus groups. And I think the implication of gathering a lot of community feedback is that it will be heard and acted upon. And so now that as we're nearing the end of the process, with formalizing the plan, um, for me personally, I think, of course, um, the most important thing is going to be moving forward. Um, 
translating those community voices to outcomes, results, actions, and communicating that back to the community, making sure that everyone's aware of um, what's being done, what's not being done, why, and so forth. And um, I think we should be honest. I would encourage staff in these annual updates to be honest about you know, shortcomings or changes in priority. It's, it's better to you know, communicate why something didn't get done or why it fell off the list or got deprioritized rather than not mention it at all. Because again, since we have all this community feedback coming in, I think it's just important that the community also feels, and like Mr. Kenny said, there's a lack of trust. So to build that trust, I would just really value over communication and um, a clear understanding for commission members, city council, as well as residents about where things are at. Um, and so today, I think a lot of my comments will focus on um, that accountability and communication. Um, I guess the main question I would like to start with is just, um, I believe in the last feedback meeting and even today, Commissioner Farrick is asking about funding. Um, to me, in an ideal world, the action plan would specify for the things that haven't been started yet, especially the short-term things, um, what we're waiting on. Is it funding? Is it staff resources? And um, also like a key point of contact, I see we have like a lead agency for each item, but I believe last time we discussed having perhaps like a, an email that community members can reach out to so that people can feel like there's somebody behind these expected actions. So um, my question for staff is, is that something that staff has considered? Is that reasonable? Um, what are your thoughts? Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sillen. I can begin to try to address some of your points, and um, if other members of the project team would like to would like to chime in, please do so as well. So, in terms of the action guide, you're right. For the funding sources, we've listed some potential funding sources that are known at this time um, for this long range planning document. Uh, we don't want to get so specific to bog us down or like tie us down, but we also want to include the specificity that we know uh, today. So what you see in the document is what we uh, have identified through working with our different colleagues and different departments of different potential funding sources that could be pursued. In terms of the lead role, we really see that as the person that will be leading the charge for that particular action item or program. But definitely a lot of these things are uh, cross-departmental, cross-divisions. They require a lot of different people um, to coordinate those efforts. In terms of like one point of contact for advancing the environmental justice element, that would be the community development department as a whole. We would be uh, shepherding this um, as part of that long-range planning effort. Thank you. So is it safe to say that if a community member is looking at the action plan and they're wondering about item A or B, you are recommending that they contact um, the community development department with, with their questions th like throughout the year? Yes, certainly. I think we've begun this process in 2021. We've had so much great interaction with the community members and we'd love the opportunity to continue building that trust and those relationships. Okay, thanks. And then, yeah, regarding the funding, I understand what you're saying about um, sources of funding and where funding might come from, but what about simply um, stating which items on the list have funding and which, for which we're still seeking funding? Because maybe my understanding is wrong. I'm assuming I was looking at the list of action items that have not been started yet that are short-term. I'm assuming those have not been started either due to a staffing um, consideration. The department can only do so many things at one time, or we still don't have funding, or maybe option C, but would it make sense to list whatever that may be and make it clear what needs to happen before it gets done? 
I think we could certainly look at that and some of those reasons why something has stalled or not been started yet could come out in that action guide reporting that will be part of this process. Um, you mentioned being very transparent and being open about different shortcomings or things that are giving pause. So we will definitely do our best to identify those uh, as we proceed with implementing this action guide. Okay, thank you. And um, a follow-up question on community feedback. Um, I saw that the annual action guide update uh, item in the action guide mentions the annual update and it says it will include outreach particularly in the underserved communities. It also says outreach to further environmental justice will be ongoing. Could you elaborate on currently what you imagine that process will look like, the, the outreach and interaction with the community? Thank you for the question, Commissioner Sillen. So certainly I think we've learned a lot of different valuable lessons throughout this process. Definitely the biggest lesson, at least for me, as one of the people working on this project is we really need to make a concerted effort to meet people where they are. And today is a great example of that with us having this first planning commission meeting at the Belhaven Community Campus. So as we look ahead to implementing the EJA element, I really see us making more efforts to continue building along um, that relationship that we've had with the community, meeting people where they are, whether it's um, in-person meetings here at the Belhaven Community Campus, having dedicated office hours in different parts of the city, having a dedicated, um, I know a concierge type person was also mentioned. I know um, there's a lot of interest in that but through uh, electronic um, outreach, as well as physical door-to-door, -door, hard copy, those, um, those multimedia different ways of reaching people, those are definitely top of mind. The city does have a communications and public outreach uh, division. So we uh, work very closely with them to continue to make sure that our outreach efforts are of good quality. And of course, we'll supplement our efforts with working with different community partners, um, including but not limited to climate resilient communities. Thank you. Um, so if the elements are adopted by city council in September, when would the first annual update be? So the city council has annual goal setting, I believe in the spring time frame. So even just in a few months, we need to already begin starting to populate and update from what we even have here today. This will be an ongoing effort and our goal is to make sure that our action guide is as up to date as possible to reflect what the city is doing and to be able to communicate all the good work that um, the city is doing for the community and with the community. Thank you. Um, so for community members that want to continue to follow these updates and perhaps be involved in any further um, outreach or focus groups, what do you recommend as the best way to make sure they're notified? I heard some of the public commenters meeting uh, mentioning that they would have liked to have more time or they have trouble you know, finding out about these things. What, what do you recommend as one or two of the best ways that um, folks could stay updated? Thank you. So certainly the best way, I think, um, is to definitely encourage people to sign up for our email list, which is at menlopark.gov slash housing element. There's a how to get involved tab that can be expanded. And please enter your email there. That's where we send regular updates on anything related to the housing element, EJ element, as well as the safety element. And looking ahead, we'll be looking at different uh, website improvements to continually uh, improve our messaging and make sure that our communications are clear. We also uh, gladly welcome any feedback if there are different ways um, that we could better connect with the community. We definitely want to hear that feedback. So please do reach out to us. Thank you. Uh, I don't have any more questions at this time. Thank you, Chair Schindler. Thank you, Commissioner Sillen. Uh, Commissioner Silverstein. Thank you. I want to thank city staff for putting this together. I also want to thank everyone for being here. Um, it's really fantastic to see more people in this planning commission meeting than I've seen in a long time. Um, and it's, it's great to be able to talk about all of this. Uh, I have a couple generic comments about the 
environmental justice element. Um, the first is regarding the, the general theme of implementation. Um, I know that things take a long time and I know that they're complicated, but in my limited experience to various projects with city government, things take too long. Um, as noted, the CJ element has been in progress for over three years and we still don't have shade or benches at our bus stops. Um, a lot of the bigger projects do require public outreach, public comment, coalition building, and that can have absolutely amazing benefits for the larger and controversial projects, but it slows down making the clear and obvious improvements that we need. And we often spend thousands of dollars, if not tens of thousands of dollars on consultants, and we spend years of studies before making even simple changes. Um, I would love it if some of these elements could be pre-identified as quick fixes. Um, that could just be implemented by the individual government departments that own it, as opposed to having to go back to city council for a new resolution and just slow things down. Um, prior to being on the planning commission, I was on the complete streets commission, and there was this bifurcation of certain projects, some of which were major changes, and they would obviously go through city council and public notice and meetings, and some of which were very minor changes, restriping um, or you know changing a, a, a turn, and that could just be done. And a lot of these things can just be done. Um, so I, I, I don't want to go into all the details, but it'd be great if we could identify the simple ones that then don't need to take another year um, before we even implement them. Um, I know it's been talked about before, um, but with the funding sources, I don't have a recommendation regarding the J element itself, but as we think about um, amending and continuing to update the um, action guide, it would be great to know whether or not our expectation is that these funding sources would be sufficient. So for a lot of the action items, we've identified a possible grant, but I have no understanding of whether or not that grant would give us the million out of a million dollars, or if it would only be 10%. Um, and so, uh, you know, obviously that will have to happen over time. Um, but as staff gets that understanding, it'd be great to update the information um, uh, as part of updating the community, just so we know, hey, this thing is either likely to get funded or not, or it's a, it's a long ways away. Um, I do have one comment on the actual environmental justice element itself. I mentioned this when we were the draft of it um, at a planning commission meeting earlier, but I still don't think that the report does a sufficient job to quantify the actual environmental impacts of different pollutant sources. Um, there are 10 or more different pollution indicators, and each of them are rated on a percentile basis relative to other communities in Menlo Park and all of California. Um, but it doesn't go into any detail of trying to quantify the impact of that percentile. I'll give an example on, this is on page 100 of the uh, agenda. Bellhaven uh, census tract is the 96th percentile in lead risk uh, in housing. It's also the 94th percentile in pollutants from traffic impacts. I have no idea the magnitude of those different percentiles. It's possible that lead risk in housing has been eliminated over time and it's not actually a big deal and being 96th percentile is bad relative to others, but it doesn't actually matter as much or it's possible that it's a really big deal and is an immediate concern that needs to be solved. Um, and there's nothing that I saw in this report that allows people to say, these are where, these are the pollutants where our community is being impacted the most. Um, the last thing that I wanted to opine on, um, and this is less a comment on uh, element itself, but I want us to take the opportunity to uh, use this dais um, to give general feedback and, and 
to, to talk to other members of the Planning Commission around this. Um, it's in regards to priority number two for the community um, or uh, element J4, um, which is access to high quality and affordable food. Obviously a very important element of any neighborhood in any community. It's not a surprise whatsoever that this is high on anyone's priority list. Um, when some new large, large apartment buildings were approved last year in the Bayfront neighborhood, uh, hundreds of units each, I was dismayed that none of them included any ground floor grocery stores, cafes, restaurants, or any stores at all. I wasn't on the Planning Commission at the time, so I asked members of City Council and the Planning Commission why not. And the answer I received was that retail isn't always successful, and we can't mandate it, and it's not a guarantee. And so we just left it alone. And what we're left with is a Bayfront neighborhood that will have hundreds of new residents with nowhere to get groceries and nowhere to go out to dinner within walking distance. The developers that are building these projects are making millions of dollars. And in doing so, I think it's not unreasonable for us as a community, as a commission, as a city council, to require that as part of community building, we think about elements beyond just the housing and what it takes to actually have a vibrant community and a neighborhood. Um, and that to me would be one of the things that I'll be looking um, to my fellow commissioners um, if any of these future projects come to, to the table when it comes to making sure that these neighborhoods do have access to a simple grocery store. And that's it. Thank you very much for everything. Commissioner Sir, oh, excuse me, Commissioner Silverstein. Um, I'll take this opportunity to, to just uh, also share my gratitude uh, for the evolution of the environmental justice element, particularly the action plan um, and the continued work on the safety element as well. Um, I appreciate the pivot just starting with the naming convention of the action plan. Um, when we saw it last time, it was an implementation, uh, implementation guide, but now we're actually focused on action. And the last time we talked about this document, we made the distinction between an input, so gathering the inputs and sort of what was important. Uh, and I think a spectacular job was done um, before we saw this in June and has continued since then. Um, this is a document that reflects a tremendous amount of community involvement, many voices, a lot of hard work by a lot of people. So the input phase is, is fantastic and we've captured it. But now, we, when we also talked about inputs, we talked about outputs. And the important part is to now look forward. And I think many of the comments, uh, look forward in terms of how we keep track of the goals we're setting and the promises that we want to keep. Many of the comments that have been made here tonight um, about, for example, tracking funding or understood by my other, other commissioners, like, What's the funding? Where are the things being blocked? Is it a question of staff? Is it a question of priorities? Is it a question of you know, identifying the funding source or bringing that funding to fruition? I think can be part of output that can be baked into the reporting that's been committed to. It can be baked into the, the next iterations of these action plans. So again, huge kudos to the folks who've just been thinking about how to structure all of this information and forward looking because not only is this a document that is great for input it's going to be great for output going forward um, so thank you very much i have a couple of just small comments um, particularly under goal um, under uh, number seven about creating equitable civic and community engagement um, just for consideration as uh, this moves forward for city council review. Um, 7J um, made a, an addition that talked about a committing to an annual reporting at a minimum um, to the city council and made available on the city website. I wanted to borrow that concept of setting sort of a minimum threshold and put it into um, it's new. Uh, a 7L, 
um, which talks about, it says the city council shall consider the community identified environmental justice priorities during its annual priority and goal setting workshops. And I'd love to see the concept of at a minimum, um, that's how it becomes part of city operation. Um, I think Ms. Chow earlier alluded to, you know, there, there are city council planning sessions and then there are departmental priorities. And having helped run a large organization in the past, I know that there are even quarterly and monthly and weekly decisions that need to be made. And I, I hope that part of the culture of goal setting and evaluating priorities can be we constantly go back to this document. We constantly go back to this list and say, okay, we're trying to figure out what to do in October. We're trying to figure out what to do in January. Let's go back to the goals and, and just touch base. I have full faith that that's what's going to happen, but I, I appreciate the opportunity to institutionalize that in the document. Um, I also uh, wanted to specifically is, uh, express enthusiastic support um, for, no, I made a, oh, it's, it's an action item. Um, it's program 70, and it's an action item four, so 74, which in the document says encouraging representation from all districts in the city, on city boards and commissions. Um, and since we are the planning commission, I, I wanted to specifically address this, the opportunity for um, members of the Bellhaven community and Bayfront community um, to be part of the planning commission as, that, as those positions open up. Um, every project that the planning commission considers, and certainly tonight's topic, um, but really every topic that we're asked to engage in could benefit from the insights of a commissioner who lives in Bellhaven or Bayfront. Um, I, I certainly feel strongly that that is the case. And I hope that some of the community members that are here tonight um, or listening at home online um, would consider um, the, pl the planning commission and other commission, op commission openings as they, um, as they occur. Those are the key things um, that I wanted to, to speak on as it relates to the environmental justice element. Um, like uh, other commissioners have said, um, for the safety element, um, I don't have any concerns with any of the modifications that were noted in the tract changes document. And I definitely support for the, the topic of biosafety levels. Um, I think pursuing that via a staff-led study session um, as, as advised by city council is, is an appropriate next step. Um, it has certainly come up on a number of occasions um, and I think I'm glad to see that it's going to, it will be addressed even if it's not explicitly included in the safety element. Um, do commissioners have other comments or questions or follow-up points uh, at this time? Commissioner Doe. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Chair. Um, I, I, in addition to all these fantastic high level and, and detailed feedback from my fellow commissioners, um, I wanted to ask staff if it would be possible to incorporate um, Ms. Centoyo's comment about community members concerned with lighting under J6 D7 to add, incorporate regular maintenance um, explicitly call that out and also to our previous commenter I'm sorry I didn't catch her name um, bus shelters I also if, if specifically that could be included as one of the um, you know it's that you do a great job of listing like incomplete sidewalks and lack of shade trees and I and I think bus shelters shade and benches is not explicitly listed and I think that would be nice if that could be incorporated thank you the chair if I may so for the that recommendation um, you can incorporate it as part of a motion um, when it comes time to to make a vote on the resolutions if you would like for that to be 
considered by council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Commissioner Sillen, you look like you have a, a follow-up question. Yes, thank you, Chair Schindler. Um, yeah, I was. I had a similar question for staff. So, if we add something like that to a motion, and I think this is part of a bigger question that I have, is there a downside? Meaning, is, does something else get deprioritized, or you know, is is, is there? Is this just something that can be added on top to the existing list for these particular requests, which were to support shade for bus stops and um, regular maintenance of lighting? I think those are items that could be added. Um, as clarifications to existing programs and action items. And so I think that would be a reasonable thing. It wouldn't necessarily push something else out of the running for a, a near term fix or something like that. Thank you. Um, Chair Shen, I have another question. It's okay. Please. Um, yeah, so kind of in line with that. So I'm looking at um, the list of um, the action plan and it looks like we have by my count about 39 items in progress with another 41 items listed for short-term initiation within the next three years um and you know like commissioner silverstein said some of those might be bigger items that require a lot of coordination some of them might be quick little uh things that can be done relatively fast, but I'm just wondering um, if staff could elaborate on maybe how confident they feel in those items being initiated within the next three years. Again, in the spirit of accountability, we're kind of considering this document as, in, in my mind, a relatively realistic plan of what the community could expect to be done, of course, things happen, uh, pandemics and so forth, but barring anything like that, should the average community member expect to see, let's say, 80, 90 percent of those things initiated within the next three years? Or is this more of kind of an optimistic reach version of what staff would really like to accomplish, but perhaps, um, you know, we could expect a lot of things to run up against other priorities. Thank you, Commissioner Sillen. So definitely what is in the action guide listed as short-term initiation. Those are things that um, the project team has heard that are of great importance to the community and also in a partnership with different people at the city as well as other community partners we feel that those are things that we can pursue in that short-term time frame to uh, make them happen. So definitely there is the intent to make those things come to fruition, but of course, each thing that has um, a short-term initiation time frame attached to it, we also have to study and then make sure that we can do that. So it's gonna be a collaboration between um, city staff, community partners, and we welcome all, all individuals to get involved in this process. Advancing environmental justice will not just be um, under the city's sole uh, the direction, but it definitely is a whole community effort. Yeah, and, uh, thank you. I, I think we discussed this last time, but my concern is just, um, you know, all these departments within the city and outside of the city that are listed as lead or support each have their own list of priorities that they're pursuing. And I'm worried that we have this kind of planning process we've gone through, but then after it's all approved, we go to these departments and say, hey, we just approved this environmental justice element. We need to do these things for the next three years. And departments go like, oh, 
uh, well, we have this whole other th list of things we need to do. So um, is that a reasonable concern or has there been coordination already with these other departments to make sure these things prioritize these things are prioritized? I believe last time we talked about someone being a, a quarterback that's constantly like uh, Chair Schindler was saying, following up with these departments on a regular basis to make sure things don't fall off as their priorities change. Can you speak more to that, please? Thank you, Commissioner Silen. So um, to address your question of whether or not different departments and divisions have had the opportunity to review and give input, yes, they certainly have. Um, all city departments have been thoroughly involved in this process from the very beginning since uh, 2021 as part of the multiple revisions and document milestones that we outlined in the presentation, um, staff and as well as CRC, they've been involved every step of the way to integrate the city perspective and our experience of what uh, we know can be done, but also CRC helps bring that other side of these are the community priorities and importance. So we definitely met in the middle to make sure um, what is reflected in the document uh, reflects what the community uh, wants and places high importance on, but also putting that lens of what the city thinks it is possible to pursue in the, diff in, in the different time frames. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think my final kind of summary is again, just reiterating what I think everybody else up here is the other commissioners are saying, which is we feel strongly, or I won't speak behalf on the others. I feel strongly that this is a big commitment. There's a lot of items in the action plan. Um, just the, sh the sheer number, you know, 80 things, I believe, roughly total in progress or short term. And so I just, again, want to reiterate, um, like Chair Schindler was saying, thank you, staff, for taking the time to listen, gather input, create this very well formatted document. And moving forward, I just think it's very important to focus on implementation action, I suppose, uh, keeping the community updated and being as clear and transparent as possible about what is and is not getting done. But based on your answers today, I trust that you guys can do it. So looking forward to that. Thank you. Uh, Sullen, please. Yes, sorry, I, I'll just wrap up by saying I would support um, both a, a motion to approve both elements and add on Commissioner Doe's suggestions about incorporating the community feedback, but I uh, don't want to make a motion until all commissioners have had a chance to provide input. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sullen. We have other comments or questions, statements of support. I don't see any hands raised, so I'll, I'll make one brief one myself. Um, the word trust keeps coming up. Um, so I think, I think Mr. Kennedy talked about it in terms of um, something that was missing um, to some extent in some of the input processes. And again, I, I just think that all of the asks that have been made here today are about having trust in the process and building trust that the city is doing everything it can and maybe even going well beyond what has been possible in the past um, to address the environmental justice inequities that exist in our community. Um, and I would I look forward to, I guess, the spring. We heard that the first possible set of reporting on these goals will come up in the spring. So it's not even annually um, for those being things that we at the Planning Commission see. I think that the whole city will see um, because, again, I think the statement was made that the issues addressed in this report um, may happen here first and worst in these communities, but they eventually affect all of Menlo Park. Um, either directly or indirectly. So this is a report for the entire city as well. Uh, and with that, I will turn to commissioners and see if potentially there is a motion um, or an amended motion.
to be brought specifically for the, the first component here. I'll just clarify, go back to my notes. Um, looking for a motion with regard to um, recommending that the city council amend the general plan to include an environmental justice element. Um, well, there'll be an, another potential second motion regarding the safety element. Thank Mr. you, Chair. Um, so uh, that was a, uh, you're, you were restating the first, or is that right, from yes. Commissioner Sillen? And then um, with the, but um, I, I wasn't sure if Commissioner Sillen had made a first. Okay. Um, I, I simply I'm wanted sorry. to, to okay. clarify okay. that we will go, if, as we proceed when we're ready, we will need to consider two separate motions. Um, the first one would, would be with regard to amending the general plan to include the environmental justice element. That's the first one. And the second one would be um, recommending the city council update the existing safety element with the contents that we have reviewed here tonight. Thank you. So I thank you for clarifying that that there is not a motion yet on the table. I um, would be happy to make a motion to recommend to city council to um, adopt the environmental justice element. Um, and hopefully it's amenable to other commissioners with the added clarification of um, the maintenance for the lighting and bus shelters with the understanding that's added detail without displacing priority of other items. So we have a, a motion um, to recommend that the city council amend the general plan to include an environmental justice element with the clarifications um, that in the action plan, there would be language clarifying the need for the bus shelters and seats at bus stops and that lighting would include maintenance of those lightings. Is that, did I correctly summarize, Commissioner Dove? Yes, thank you, Chair. Okay. Second. We have a second from Commissioner Silverstein. Any further discussion on the motion? Okay, seeing no further discussion, I will just make sure that staff has all the clarif has the detail that they need on the particular, on the motion before we vote. We just wanted to confirm there was a discussion about uh, the words at a minimum in terms of reporting timeframes, um, whether that should be added as well as a recommendation or not. Um, so I, I think I had made a discussion about putting that in potentially as, as language related to staff operations. I hope that's considered, but I'm not, I'm not going to necessarily think it's a requirement to be added to the, the motion. Okay, um, seeing no further discussion, I uh, will call a vote on the motion. Commissioner Doe? Yes. Commissioner Farrick? Yes. Commissioner Sillen? Yes. Commissioner Silverstein? Yes. And I am also a yes. Um, so that is five in favor of the motion with two absences um, and the motion moves forward. Um, so then we would potentially at this point entertain a second motion regarding the safety element. I, I did the question, fair comment uh, from Commissioner Silverstein, whether the public comment that we did um, in the first part of the meeting covered both components and we confirmed that it did because um, we considered them as, as one agenda item at this time. Um, but we will do this as a second motion because there's a second resolution in, in this document um, and that's how city council will consider it. Commissioner Silverstein. Um, so while we're on the topic of the safety element specifically, I did have two quick comments about the safety element and I'm, I would also be happy to make a motion. But um, one is my understanding that gas powered blowers were banned in Menlo Park as of July 1st this year. Um, I also recall it not being a unanimous vote and there being a, a three to two vote within the city council to pass that. Um, not necessarily today, 
but in regards to safety, pollutants, noise, it would be great to get a update post fact to see how that's doing. Was that a good decision overall? Do people have regrets? Is there, um, did it exceed all of our expectations? Um, because I know that is one of the elements that, that contributes to um, overall safety. And then my last, just very generic soapbox comment um, on page 50, 353 of the agenda packet shows a map of noise in Menlo Park by decibels, by location. And it really, really emphasizes another vector of harm that excessive cars have in our community. Um, we talk about pollutants, we talk about vision zero and safety and all sorts of things, but noise is something with respect to cars that doesn't get a lot of play. I'm really glad that it's a entire section of the safety element and just wanted to remind everyone that where you live in respect to where our freeways are has a very high uh, impact on noise specifically coming from cars. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Silverstein. Um, are there any other further comments about the safety element uh, that we have not gotten to today? Thoughts or comments? Okay. Then perhaps we are ready to entertain a motion. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I would like to move to um, recommend city council amend existing safety element with the updated one as it appears in tonight's agenda packet. Second. Thank you. We have a first and a second um, to recommend that city council update the safety element. Um, no further discussions or hands raised from commissioners. Um, I will, unless there are. Oh, blue lights. Okay. Go ahead and call a vote on that this second motion. Uh, Commissioner Doe? Yes. Commissioner Farrick? Yes. Commissioner Sillen? Yes. Commissioner Silverstein? Yes. And I am also a yes, so that's five in favor uh, and two absences, and the motion carries. Thank you. All right, so uh, with that, I will close out the public hearing section of our agenda, and we will move on to our final section, informational updates. Mr. Smith, would anyone from staff uh, wish to provide an update on oncoming, up, upcoming uh, planning commission meetings and agendas? Yes, yeah, so I just call your attention to the next planning commission meeting, which will be on September 9th. And we have um, one case scheduled for that meeting, which is a use permit and a minor subdivision for two single family residences on an R2 lot. So we'll bring, bring that forward in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Are there any other informational items from commissioners or any other staff? Okay. Um, seeing none. I will move to adjourn this meeting uh, at 9.04 p.m. Thank you all very much um, for a really fun meeting. And I'm sorry. Oh, thank, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your assistance here this evening. It made it a, a much more inclusive and, and enjoyable meeting.